there is a legend that is prevalent in Ohio, Connecticut, and Michigan of humanoid creatures with skulls of disproportionate dimensions. They are often hiding, but have been known to come out on occasion and attack people. They are called the Melonheads. I enjoy a good crime show, and if they've taught me anything, it's that the type of crime and the way it's committed tell you about the perpetrator. So what does it mean when someone, or something, like Melonheads decide to spend their time hiding and only attack when they can ambush? What in their history could have caused this M.O.? The legend has a few possible origins. One dates back to the 1600s. According to the legend, a family in Trumbull, Connecticut was suspected of practicing witchcraft. They were run out of town and forced into the woods. The family was left there to starve to death. The family, however, did not die. They survived in the woods by hunting and gathering, and managed to build a small shelter. When the young children grew into adults, they inbred and the family continued to grow. This inbreeding continued for generations, resulting in mutations. Their skulls grew in a way that made the tops of their skulls appear like they were bouldering and they had malformed faces. They would become known as the Melonheads and would terrify anyone who came across them in the woods. In another version of the Melonhead legend, there was a mental asylum that had mysteriously burnt down in the 1960s. Some of the patients escaped into the nearby woods. They survived just like the family in the first version and began to inbreed. Another possible origin comes from Ohio, where in the 1960s, a man named Dr. Crow would do experiments on children with hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a disease causing the head to swell from fluid building up in the skull. According to legend, one day, the children managed to kill Dr. Crow. And then escaped into the woods. They survived and formed a tribe of sorts. Later, they would be spotted by locals and be known as the Melonheads. Whether or not any of these stories have any truth to them, people in New England have been reporting encounters with people that match the Melonheads' description for years. In the 70s, a young man driving down a back road in Connecticut saw what looked like some strange-looking people wearing filthy clothes, watching the car from the woods near the road. He decided to turn around to get a better look, and as he pulled over to turn around, the car was swarmed by creatures with huge heads that began to bang on and hit the car. Terrified, the young man sped away. Another account came from Ohio, 1964. A 
a couple of teenagers were driving around near Wycliffe, Ohio, when they saw what looked like a melon head by the road. They watched as it walked into the woods. They pulled over and followed after him. When following him through the woods, they saw him enter a shack, but were too scared to get any closer. The teens told some of their classmates, and a few of them decided they would go back and investigate the shack. On the day they went to find the shack, they were stopped by the police. The teens told the police about the melon heads. This appeared to make the police very upset. The police insisted there was no such thing as melon heads. The officers took all the kids back to the station and had them call their parents. One of the teens claimed that a specific policeman was very angry and insisted there was no such thing as melon heads. He said it seemed weird, like the cop was trying to cover something up. Sightings still continue to this day. I'm sure there are plenty of people that would say the melon heads are just made up to be scary, but everything about the melon head points to a group that is scared. Hiding is what people do when they're afraid, and only ambushing shows a lack of confidence too. If I wanted to make something sound scary, I wouldn't just have it hide forever and then ambush. I'd give it a job. As a bill collector? <sighs> Those guys give me the willies. It's a good thing I have Patreon. I have cabin bills, electric bills, internet bills, and food bills. Sure, I look bony, but I do eat. And if you share just $1 a month with me, I will share with you at least one bonus video a month that breaks a YouTube rule. This month's Patreon exclusive video is going to be about the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Maniac, one of the absolute scariest serial killers ever, Albert Fish. If watching Patreon exclusive videos is right for you, join me for only $1 a month on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash super horror show. I hope you all are ready to have a great November. And remember, take good care of yourselves. Because to me, you're one in a melon. <gasps> <laughs>